Hola, eh, como ya eh, me presentó Nelly. Well, Nelly has introduced me. My name is Jose Luis, and I'd like, if you allow me, to English. Got confused. My name is Jose Luis, and I want to show you today a very powerful tool to get people involved in your projects and make them engaged with your projects. That tool is gaming. Uh, we are going to see how we can take some elements from games and how we can apply those elements to our projects to make them more successful. Did you know that a project with a consistent change management process has six times more possibilities to be successful compared to a project that doesn't have a change management process. Over the past 10 years, I have been working on creating workplaces that are better for people to work, to be more productive, and to be happier, and have been focusing a lot on finding ways to make them part of the process of creating those workplaces, engage them in the process, and made them part of it. I'm very happy to be here today. I'm very, I'm very excited to talk to you about one of my favorite uh, projects, uh, personally. I'm, I'm very happy to be here to see a lot of old friends that I haven't seen in, in, in some time and be part of this great panel that certainly looks much better when I'm not sitting there. Uh, so that said, I'm going to start right now uh, like playing. Sugar Crush. There is certainly something very interesting about games that engage us, uh, basically because it's a lot of fun to play games. Everyone probably has a favorite type of game. As you, see, as you saw in the video, it might be a sports, it might be role-playing, it might be a traditional board game, but there is something about them that engages and have, and have us uh, playing them all the time. So it's very interesting how we can take some elements from those and apply to our own projects. I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, what I'm doing related to workplace. Gamification sounds like a funny word, right? Uh, but there are a lot of funny words on these times. Uh, co-working, co-creation, crowdsourcing, big data, the internet of things, and those, those sort of words that are coming into our normal language these days. Well, as you can imagine, gamification has to do with do something related to games. Basically, it is to take uh, some techniques and mechanics from games and apply them uh, to solve problems. Also, it's very useful to engage people and change behavior. It's about taking the elements or attributes that we love about games and bring all of them to a non-game environment. There is the avatar part, our character. There are some elements of chance on the games that give them a little bit of mystery as well, that makes them more interesting. Uh, of course, there are rewards. We all want to be rewarded when we are playing a game. Uh, rewards like points or digital badges, and definitely it has to be a context, like the board that makes a story where we want to play off. And all of these challenges happens 
in an environment where there is competition and there is collaboration. It's fantastic to be playing a game where you get feedback all the time from your, from your peers, from people that are probably some, in some other country in the world and playing with you at the same time, or just you know, at home with a board game. But definitely, definitely there is something that is very engaging for us. So I'm going to show you a couple of very nice examples, and then we are going to do a three-act show uh, to see some examples applied to projects. This is very funny. It's called the speed, li the speed limit lottery. It happened in Sweden. So there is a radar that takes pictures of the car plates, evidently. So if you go over the speed limit, you will get a fine. But that fine goes to a uh, lotto that is going to be played by everyone who goes on the right speed. So if you go on the right speed, they will take a picture of your car plate, and you will go into a lotto, and you can win the money from the fines from the people that went over the speed limit. Isn't that great? So you just need to go to the right speed, and you will get their money. Another example, it's a local one. Uh, it's very, very interesting, uh, because it's from a bank, a financial institution, VV. VA, and it's called the VVVA game. Actually, it was designed to encourage people to use the electronic banking. And there are a series of uh, rewards and small challenges just to be using the internet. So it encourages and makes users to go and do, uh, and, and do use the electronic banking because they want the rewards that they offer. As said, we're going to start. There you go. Fun is very powerful. Fun is very powerful, and it could help us to change a lot of things. You're probably familiar with this. This was an initiative from Volkswagen, not very popular these days. Uh, I mean Volkswagen, not this. The, the fun theory uh, basically wants to find out how we can change behaviors through change. Excuse me, picture. Thank you. If we take this to our projects, well, you can use certainly a few images that are funny related to flexibility, how people is tied up to their desks, uh, wireless technology, I love that one. Uh, Dilbert always gives you uh, nice examples of how we see the workplace. And uh, of course, if an image is worth for a thousand world, words, uh, videos are worth for a million. So you can also use some videos. I'm going to show you. the difference? Here we go. In the As you can see, you can use a lot of these images or videos just to send a message to people, right? It's very funny when you see people laughing about a situation that they can create, like the older guys running, fighting over a workstation. Uh, when, when people see that, they realize that that is actually not going to happen in real life, right? So it helps a lot. It's a very powerful tool as well. The next act is make them play. We want them to participate. We want them to introduce, besides of the fun, some other elements from games. 
Take a look at those faces. Whether they are surprised or focused, they are all engaged. These are people playing games, video games, in this case. Uh, the fact is that they are absolutely engaged with what they are doing. Why this is so important? Because according to Gallup's uh, State of the Global Workplace Survey, only 13% of workers feel engaged with what they do. 63% feel not engaged. And there is a worrying 24% of actively disengaged people. That means that they are actively disencouraging everyone. This is one example of a project uh, I did with a, a company I used to work for. Uh, it's fun. We did a pre-occupancy survey and just got a 53% rate of participation, which is kind of normal when you do that. And we decided to introduce a bit of the challenge uh, that was just respond three questions uh, in less than one minute and you will get a reward. The reward was a, was a very small reward, was a, a pass for, for a movie theater. Right? But we have 81% participation. So we introduced a challenge, we introduced competition, and we introduced the reward. And people felt that they wanted to participate much more than they do comparing to the workplace survey. Another example with another, uh, another company, we hide that character. It was called Mr. Harry. Uh, it's a beauty products company. Uh, it was hidden on the welcome manual. We offered a gift card for the one who uh, finds where Mr. Harry was hidden on the manual. So we made people increase the visits to the website because it was an online document, to plus 200% compared to before. So we actually change a little bit their behavior and make them uh, going in online and review the whole manual again which was what we really uh, intended from the beginning. In a more recent one, there you go, we use again the trivia contest type of, uh, type of element, but also on the welcome day, we wanted to introduce fun to make it memorable for all the employees. So you see on the pictures there, we have uh, some clowns, uh, we have uh, stand-up comedy in some of the areas of the new office to, and everything was related to the protocols and behaviors that they needed to follow on this new uh, workplace that, that we designed for them. Another one again, hidden smile for a company. Uh, there were a series of communications that we call the workplace pills, um, and they needed to find how many smiles were hidden on those, so we make them again go back and review all the information again until they find those smiles. And again, the, the, the rewards were not very expensive rewards, were always like passes to movie theaters or gift cards for small amounts, but people massively participated on those. The final act, this is the most exciting of all. Uh, this is actually turn it into games. Why we do that? You know this guy? He appears on the $100 bills. Might be important. It's Benjamin Franklin. He said this thing that is very important. If you tell me, I probably will forget. If you teach me, I will remember. But if you involve me, I will learn. It's kind of the very early statement for co-creation. right? Get people involved on something, and they will learn. They will be part of it. In time, we have learned that people feel very comfortable when they are physically together, you know, with physical elements, playing something. And, uh, and it works, it works, it works very well. And there are a few examples out there that I want to show you uh, that exist for a few years. Come on. There you go. The challenge to use a game 
for designing a workplace. In this case, I'm, I'm talking about workplace design. I'm sure that you can find elements of gaming for your own projects. Uh, is to bring people into a room that are not designers and ask them to work to solve complex problems uh, in a non-game environment, but using those game techniques. One of the earlier, like a board game, is called The Sandbox. The Sandbox was designed by Scott Francisco in the late 90s, uh, when he worked for DGW, a uh, workplace consultancy company that is no longer exists. Now Scott has a, a different company. It's called Pilot Projects. It's very, very interesting what they do. But this is completely a board game. So you see all the pieces, the dice, the cards. Everything is in there. So you see there that is actually it works like a real board game. And people have fun you know, going around the table and playing with it. And it, it works for different scales. It works for urban scale. It works for multi-level projects, or it can work for smaller spaces. It has to be tailored uh, in each case for the client, but it makes sense and it's a lot of fun. Another example is called the Workplace Sudoku. It was developed in Australia. A very good Mexican friend is involved in that one. Uh, and it's using the famous Sudoku game to create uh, context for workplace design. They divide uh, the space into three categories, space, people, and technology, which are normally the pillars of the uh, workplace design. And it works very similar to Sudoku. So you have some existing conditions at the beginning. So you have to put there some existing conditions, which is the numbers that you have at the beginning uh, when you are playing Sudoku. Uh, you need to be careful with that. If you have too many, no room to play. If you have too few, no reference to work on. Right? After uh, putting the conditions, you have objectives and aspirations. That means what you want to achieve with that project. Those are the red uh, numbers there. And as you can imagine, the way of playing it is like that. So you put the existing conditions, you put the objectives, and you have to fill the blanks with the strategy. Looks a little bit like this. So you set up the board. Let's take a look. A bigger one, I don't know if you can read. But there are a few you know, uh, conditions and requirements there. And you come up with potential solutions, playing with a group of people. That's a picture of how it looks, a real board. And the third example is uh, from Europe, from the uh, Swiss Technology and Innovation Commission. It's more like a role-playing game. This one is very much focused on flexible working. So you have four characters, four team characters. Uh, yes, as you can imagine, it's for four players. Uh, you have the boss, you have the team leader, the office worker and the satellite worker, right? So it's a, again uh, with a board, with task cards and, uh, and some places where the tasks need to occur. And everything is about uh, solving a tasks with collaboration, with the collaboration of the, other, of the other players. And the fastest you finish or everyone finish their tasks, the more successful the game is. Right? So it's great because there are a few things going out there. So this is the one that I've been working on uh, for some time. It's a work in progress. Uh, it, doesn't have really, it doesn't really have a name. So for the moment, it's called the workplace game. But it's the same idea. We want to bring people into a room, and we want to use some uh, key elements from games to make it work. So. It's very simple. We start with a visioning session, you know, people picking the, their favorite images uh, just to set up a little bit of context. There is a board. There are some pieces that are scaled to the board, uh, which is very interesting because the pieces need to have pictures. At the beginning, there were like layouts that people, people that is not an architect or designer didn't understand it. There are chips that represent value. There are dices 
and there are uh, some cards that can be reward or challenge. Uh, so you have a certain amount of chips, so you can purchase, acquire some spaces, and it's about you just roll the dice and you can get a card or you can buy a workplace. The challenges can be very simple, mini Sudoku, mini Tangram, build a paper airplane or things like that, and there is a facilitator that can uh, introduce another challenges, another very you know, exciting and funny challenges. When, when you are finishing the project and they come and say, well, we need to put 20 more people, we need to double the size of the data room, those sort of things that you probably are familiar with, which is lovely. This is the end of it. So what's coming next? Well, actually, I'm, I'm talking with, uh, with uh, pilot projects and the, suite, uh, the university in Australia to continue developing the co-working, uh, I'm sorry, the, the workplace game. Uh, if any of you is planning to visit uh, Los Angeles in the near future, there is a conference in Coronet uh, very soon. We're doing a panel talking about uh, experiences in Latin America. And that's it. That's it for, uh, for me on the, on the gaming. I'd like, to, I'd like you to help me out with something. Um, can, can I have lights? I, I would like to see people. Lights! This is embarrassing. There you are. Hola. Right, so um, let's see if this works. I want you to imagine, uh, think about a moment of your life when you were, you felt realized. You were the most productive you were happy about what you were doing, and you felt uh, completely realized with that. Can you do that? Uh, I want to give you a few seconds to think about that, that, that great moment uh, from your life. Is that good? In the meantime, I don't know if you know, we are being uh, recorded and it's, it's being uh, streamed everywhere in the world, uh, but just in case, I want to take a picture of you. So I will count to three. When I say three, we are in Spain. You have to say ole and raise your hands, all right? Ready? One, two, three. Ole. That's great, thank you. So. Let's continue with a with question. Do you have a moment? Do you have a moment in your head? All of you? Yeah? Have you realized that when I said, think about a moment on your life where you were most productive and you have fun and you were very happy with what you were doing, I never use the word work. Have you imagined that moment at work? Or maybe a previous job or your current job? Maybe if I don't say it's work, would you change for a different one? What this question means to demonstrate is that the context can change a lot your response. You are in a professional congress with people that probably works with you or near you somehow, but in any case, it's a very much work-related uh, environment. And probably your response is conditioned to that. So the context can be very powerful to change responses of people. I think the question is on the uh, CIFMers application. So I would like you to respond to the question, if you keep that precious moment of your life, you maintain it as a work moment, or you want to change it to a personal one. So I don't know if that is going to work or not. Well, nothing on the screen. 
So let's wait for the end of the session and let's see if, how that came out.